We're presenting the case of an 82-year-old patient who came to us from an outside institution with a history of low back pain and pain radiating into the tailbone area. He was neurologically intact. He had previously undergone at another institution a L2-3 laminectomy about five years ago for lumbar stenosis. At that time point, there was no report of a mass. A follow-up MRI scan now during his recent visit showed an enhancing mass at L4-5. T2 MRI scans, sagittal and axial, show a large intradural mass located at L4-5 with almost complete obliteration of the fecal sac. There's also a disc herniation at L2-3 that looks chronic and was not related to any of the patient's current symptoms. T1-weighted images with contrast reveal a homogeneously enhancing mass at L4-5 that's intradural and extra medullary. And again, you can see post-operative changes at the levels above from the previous laminectomy. On magnification, you can see that the mass measures approximately 10 by 12 millimeters. Of note, the spinous process and the lamina of L4 appear to be intact and not affected by the previous laminectomy above. Surgical options include open versus tubular mineral invasive surgery. The advantage of tubular surgery in this particular case is that would, it would keep us away from the previously operated upon area and we would be able to avoid the scar tissue and lower the risk of spinal fluid leaks or other associated risks with uh, the previous surgery. For this case, we decided to use intraoperative 3D navigation and augmented reality. The rationale for this was that this would allow us to plan and then execute the approach and the decompression according to the size and the localization of the tumor very precisely. For surgical planning, the preoperative MRI scan was reviewed and the enhancing portion of the tumor was marked in blue color. The patient was then positioned in prone position. We used intraoperative navigation for localization of this tumor. The area was prepped and draped in the regular stale fashion. A reference array for the brain lab navigation system was then attached to the iliac crest, in this particular case on the right side, because the surgical approach was performed from the left side. We then obtained an intraoperative low-dose CT scan for navigation. The imaging studies were then loaded into the brain lab navigation for intraoperative localization and for navigation. Using brain lab navigation, we then determined the entry point for the incision on the left side of the midline overlying L4, L5. In this particular case, we use the operating microscope for augmented reality, and this necessitates the calibration of an augmented reality represented reference array with the actual reference array. So you can see here the outline of the tumor. The skin incision was made approximately one centimeter lateral to the outline of the tumor. A small skin incision was made. The fascia was then cut sharply. And a series of dilators was used and eventually a 26 millimeter tubular retractor was placed for retraction. So on the right side is caudal, left is cranial. Once the tubular retractor has been placed, you can see the muscle tissue that is still in the way that is then being carefully removed with monopolar cauterization. The outline of the tumor indicates your trajectory for the surgery. The surgical approach now to the spinal canal is performed exactly the way that you would perform a ULBD, so a unilateral laminotomy for bilateral decompression. So we identify, in this case, the inferior medial border of the L4 lamina and the ligamentum flavum. The lamina on the ipsilateral side is then removed with the drill and with the kerosene rongeur. The uh, ligamentum flavum is exposed and completely removed on the ipsilateral side. Then we tilt the tubular retractor and the patient away from the surgeon 
to achieve exposure of the base of the spinous process and the contralateral lamina. Then we protect the dura with the suction and undercut the spinous process and undercut the contralateral lamina and remove the ligamentum flavum in order to get bilateral exposure to the dural sac. We then maximize the bony exposure and the opening based on the images that we review with augmented reality to make sure that the actual bony opening and then eventually also the dural opening is big enough to accommodate for safe resection of the intradural lesion. And this is shown in these images here. We uh, open the dura then carefully using a 15 blade knife, use tack up sutures to retract the dura towards the right and towards the left side, and then extend the dural opening according to the localization of the tumor using navigation and augmented reality. After dural opening, we identify the arachnoid membrane and the underlying traversing nerve roots. At this point then, after opening, of the arachnoid, the tumor may deliver itself, or in certain cases, it is necessary under the microscope to carefully dissect through the nerve roots to identify and find the tumor tissue. Once the tumor has been identified, it is important and necessary to see if there's an entering and an exiting nerve root. It is also important to explore whether there are other adherent or incorporated nerve roots present. In this particular case, there was one nerve root that entered cranially and exited caudally. This was stimulated to make sure that there was no particular function associated with this nerve. This was not the case and therefore the decision was made to coagulate and then cut the cranial and the caudal portion of this particular nerve root. As you can see here in this video, the outline of the tumor represented by the augmented reality corresponds very nicely with the actual localization of the tumor. At this point then, the cranial portion of the, the nerve root is coagulated and then cut using micro scissors. Next, the exiting caudal portion of the nerve is coagulated and then cut. This then completely mobilizes the tumor. At this point, then, the tumor is carefully resected and removed from the dural sac. The dural closure is performed using Gore-Tex suture in a running fashion. As you can see here, we start with the closure. We use a ball tip as a knot pusher. There are different types of needle holders available. Care is taken to make sure to protect the underlying nerve roots so they're not accidentally being incorporated in the closure, of course. At the end of the closure, we perform a Valsalva maneuver. In this case, you can see that there was some CSF leaking from the site where the tack up sutures had been applied. A figure of eight Gore Tex suture takes care of this leakage. After a watertight closure has been confirmed with a Valsalva maneuver, we then perform hemostasis. We use flow seal material and various hemostatic agents. Then fibrin glue is applied to seal the dural closure. The tubular retractor is removed very slowly under direct visualization and bipolar coagulation is used to 
take care of any residual bleeding from the muscle. We then used uh, various types of sutures for layered closure and subcuticular closure for the skin. The final pathology revealed that this particular tumor was a paraganglioma WHO grade 1. The patient remained 24 hours on flat bed rest and was mobilized the next day and left the hospital on post-operative day 1 and did very well clinically.